going a little bit different direction this evening. I believe I've got some instruction and direction. Is that okay? It's mighty quiet. You, you're like, are you unsure about that? Uh, <laughs> um, go to John 15, please. John 15. And then also we're going to be going to 1 John 5. And I want to uh, believe the Lord for ministry about prayer and healing. Mm. Amen. Yes, amen. Prayer and healing. Yes. And we're going to have some healing tonight. Hmm? So uh, if you've got an ailment or problem, it's not safe in here tonight. <laughs> if you want to keep it, you might just want to slip out now because, <laughs> because God is the healer. Always has been. Always will be. Jesus spent a big part of his ministry ministering healing to people. Didn't he? And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. In John, the 15th chapter, and the 7th verse, John 15 said, well, I tell you, let's, let's pray. Let's agree together before we read this. Father, in Jesus' name, we agree together as touching this, asking you for utterance, asking you for the anointing, asking you for the Holy Spirit's moving and manifesting, asking you for eyes and ears and hearts and minds to see and hear and receive and understand exactly what you're saying to us, what you're showing us. And we purpose not to be hearers only, forgetful hearers, but to be doers. And as surely as we act on what you say, that's the key for miracles. Whatever you say, do it, and a miracle will happen. Amen. We believe it. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Somebody say, I'm a doer. 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 Of the Word of God. In John 15, 7, Jesus said, if, now that's a big word. It's a big word. Don't rush past that word. If reveals to you that what he's about to say is conditional. The results of what he's going to say are conditional on doing what he said to do. If you abide in me, that, that word means to, we might say, live in. If you live in me. And my words live in you. Dwell or live in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done to you. This is successful prayer. Amen. Right? Yes, it is. You asked what you would. And it was done to you. It happened. But it's conditional. Yes, it On what? If you live in him, that's maintain a fellowship and a communion with your God. How many know you need to pray once in a while? Huh? Yes. You need to check in. You need to talk to him. You need to Ask him things and you need to listen. All of us need to commune with him. Not just once a week on Sunday or some service time, but every morning, every night, right. all through the day, all through the night, we need to be checking in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, yeah. Living in him and his words living in us. Amen. His words living in us. Now, I've heard, I don't know how many times, people talk about frustration with unanswered prayer. Saying, I, I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed and I just, you know, God won't do it and I don't know why. Whether it's getting your needs met, getting your answer, marriage issues, 
family issues, health issues, the same. And uh, then you also hear people talk about prayer as though it is the Savior. Many have deified prayer, saying prayer is the answer. Well, no, that's not right. Jesus is the answer. The Word is the answer. Jesus is the Word, right? The Father God is the answer. Not to minimize prayer. Prayer's so important, but prayer's not first. I've heard people say that. Well, prayer's got to be first before everything. No, no, no. You don't even know how to pray unless you know the Word. That's right. yes. You don't know what to pray for as you ought or how to pray unless you know the Word. You can easily pray in vain for nothing and get no results without an understanding of His will and His ways through His Word. Can you see what Jesus said again? John 15, 7. What did He say? If, if. If you live in me, and if my words are living in you, then you'll ask, and it'll happen. Can you see that? Yes. But it's conditional. It's conditional. Look with me in 1 John, 5th chapter. 1 John 5. First John 5 and 14. It says, this is the confidence. Now, confidence is another word for faith. Remember, Hebrews talks about don't cast your confidence away. Talking about faith and believing. This is the confidence that we have in him that what? If. If. There's that word again. So this is conditional. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Does God hear all prayers? Yes, no. Huh? Does God hear well, why would you say this? He hears us. If he's going to automatically hear us, why do you need to specify that he will hear us? We're going to get into this into the word some tonight. The answer is no. God doesn't hear all prayers. Now that, that doesn't sound right to a lot of people's ears. But again, what are you basing your beliefs on? Is it the Bible? Is it the Word? I just got through spending most of the day looking at scores and scores of verses that say God doesn't hear all prayers. <laughs> I'm not going to go through all of them. <laughs> but it's true. But if we ask anything according to His will, what? What? He hears us. Well, why would you say he hears us if he hears everything? There's no need to specify and not use the word if, because he's going to hear you. If he hears everything. And don't be concerned. I'm going to give you some, I'm going to give you enough verses to establish this. And of course, you got a Bible. That's right. Right? Concordance, whatever. You can, you can, you can search this out for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. Search it out. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And here the next part is really exciting too. And if, somebody say if, if. if. This is if, if. If we know he hears us, we know something else. Why do we know he heard us? 
Because we really felt good about it. No. No, we live by faith. That's great to have feelings. I'll take all the Lord will give me. I like them. And you're supposed to have some feelings. But you're not supposed to walk by feelings. Because if you walk by feelings, you stop walking by faith. And then you think, well, if you don't have a certain feeling, well, God didn't hear me. No, that's not walking by faith. If we know he heard us, whatever we asked, we know something else. We know we have it. We have it. Before we see it, before we feel it, we know why. Because we knew we asked according to his will. How do we know that? How could you know that? You're back to John 15, 7. His words abide in you. Come on, can you see this? How would you find out it was his will? In the word. You found out in the word. Right? That he had given it to you. That Jesus had bought and paid for it. Amen. Come on, are y'all with me or not? Yes. Right. Well, he wouldn't, have, he wouldn't have bought it and paid for it and given it to you if it wasn't his will for you to have it. That's right. Right? right? So you know it's his will. Mm-hmm. And if you asked anything according to his will, what do you know? I know he heard that prayer. Oh, somebody help me out with this. You, I know he heard. Does he hear every prayer? No, he does not. In fact, some prayers he detests. Huh? I'm quoting a scripture. We're about to read it in just a few minutes. Hold on. Don't get concerned. Don't get upset. But but why why do you feel that tension sometimes? Because people have deified prayer. That if I'm praying, I'm doing something wonderful and good. Maybe you are. Maybe you're not. There's some prayer. You'd be better off not praying at all. It actually displeases the Lord for you to pray that way. Are you all with me? Yes. Oh, yeah. Some praying is good and wonderful and gets results. Other prayer is detestable and rebellious and needs to be repented over. <laughs> well, in, well, in prayer, prayer, no. No. There's lots of different kinds of praying. <laughs> Go over this again with me. Jesus said, if, somebody say if, if, if you live in me and my words live in you, which is why you should be reading your chapter every day. Is that right? At, Monday, at least, at least that. And then hearing good teaching and preaching on a regular basis. Why? Not just somebody's opinion and theory. Not just religious tradition. But the Word. The Word. Anybody here besides me love the Word? Do you? I love the Word of God. Without it, I don't know the will of God without it. I don't know what to pray, how to pray without it. I don't know which way to go. And this one's opinion is no better than that one's opinion or my opinion. You try to build on that, it's sinking sand. It's going to bite you. But the word lives and abides forever. And it's impossible for God to lie. And he cannot fail. And if... I maintain a communion with him. And if his words are in me all the time, I can ask what I will. And it'll happen. Am I quoting Jesus or not? It'll be done. And if I ask anything, if, according to his will, well, how'd I find out? From his word. His word and his spirit. Then I know he heard me. And if I know, look at it again, 1 John 5. 15, 1 John 5, 15. And if I know that he heard me, whatever I ask, that covers a lot of territory. 
If, if I know he heard me, how do I know he heard me? Come on, this is not tricky, guys. I just want to know if you're awake or you... How, how can I know God heard my prayer? I'm, I'm confident I was praying something that was his will. And if I know it was his will from his word, from his spirit, then I know he heard me. And if I know he heard me, I can go ahead and start partying now. I can go ahead and start celebrating before I see the money, before I know the answer in my head, before my body feels any better. Oh, come on. Come, do, do you believe it or not? I, I, can, I can know that the petition that I desired has been granted to me, that I have it. It's been given to me. Can you say amen? You believe that? Amen. In Proverbs 29, let me, I told you I'd give you a couple of scriptures, so let's, let's give you some scriptures. Proverbs 29, you don't have to turn there, they'll put it on the screen, and 9. Proverbs 29 and 9. No, 28 9, I said it wrong. 28 9. He that turns away his ear from hearing the law, and that's all the word they had then, even his prayer shall be abomination. Boy, that's strong. Let me read some other translations. The NIV says, if anyone turns a deaf ear to the law. Now, now, now get this. It's not that they didn't know it. They heard it. But didn't receive it. Even his prayers are detestable. New century version, if you refuse to obey what you've been taught, your prayers will not be heard. Easy to read. When people do not listen to God's teachings, this is easy to read translation, he does not listen to their prayers. Now, this is something a lot of people don't even believe. But this is a Bible principle. If we won't listen to him, he won't listen to us. Amen. Let me give you another one. Zephaniah 7. Like I said, there, there are numerous of these. You find these in the Psalms. You find these in the uh, Proverbs, you find them in the law, you find them in God dealing with his people Israel. Zechariah 7, verse 11 said, they refused to hearken, they pulled away their shoulder. Zechariah 7, 11. They stopped their ears that they should not hear. Verse 13. Therefore it is come to pass that as he cried, and they would not hear, so they cried, and I would not hear, said the Lord of hosts. He said, you wouldn't listen to me, so I'm not listening to you. Is that fair or not? Yeah, yes, it is. <laughs> it's quiet in here. Yes, it is. <laughs> Am I reading scriptures or not? This is, a, this is a truth. That if you won't listen to him, he, he's already said something to you. But then you're trying to pray contrary to what he said to you and different from what he said to you. Is he going to change? No. no. To adapt? To, is he going to say, I know you didn't accept what I said, so let's just forget what I said. And set that aside and we'll do what you want and go your way. Not so. going to happen. <laughs> It'd be terrible if it did. Right. Because there ain't no way. You know more than him. Right. Are your ways better than his? Right. right? So if we won't listen to what he's telling us, and then we try to pray another direction, he's not going to listen to that. It's not going to work. And I suspect all of us <laughs> have done some of that. Whether we meant to 
whether or not. But who, and you might say, well, yeah, I was ignorant. I didn't know. Yeah, but whose fault is it? When there's a Bible. When there's a Holy Spirit. Right? When there were services you could have been in and meetings you could have been in. Right? Come on, y'all with me? We, we could have known more. We could have understood more. Living in Him and His Word living in us is the prerequisite for a successful prayer life. Because then we know we're not ignoring what he said. Hallelujah. That's actually how, looking back now, that's how our ministry began. I, I knew the Lord had something for us and I was, I was pleading and pleading with him. Lord, what do you want? What do you want? This is back 40 years ago now. And... Uh, but I'm, I'm carnal and, and I want to see something and I want to hear something and I want to feel something. I want God to communicate with my, my outer man. Right, yeah. God's a spirit. Yes, mm -hmm. He can do things in this realm, obviously, but that's not the usual way he communes with us. The spirit of God bears witness with our spirit yes. that we're the children of God. Mm -hmm. And finally, after months and months of this, I was kneeling down in our little mobile home with the red shag carpet <laughs> on the genuine imitation plastic. leather, which is plastic, <laughs> couch. Yeah. Boy, those get sticky in the summertime. <laughs> Thank the Lord, we've, we've moved up from there. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, but I was there praying in the middle of the night again. Lord, what? I, did, I didn't know I, we had a call on our life. We're supposed to be in the ministry. I didn't realize that at that time. And I'm saying, what, what do you want? Talk to me. Speak to me. Speak to me. I'm trying to get him to speak to me. Again, I'm wanting to feel something. I'm wanting to hear something. I want to see, write something in the sky, you know. And finally, I just kind of ran out of gas <laughs> Fell over to the side. It's late at night. I'm frustrated, exhausted. And the Lord spoke to my heart. I don't mean I heard a voice, but inside real distinctly. He said, son, I've already said many things to you in the book. Find out what I've said to you. And if I want to say something else to you, I will. That's how my ministry began. Hallelujah. Right there. I grew up around church, but I wasn't in my Bible. You know, a lot of folk go to church all their life and never even open the Bible. That's what the Lord said to me. He said, I've said many things to you already in the book. Find out what I've said to you. See, that's what we're talking about. If you don't find out what he said to you, that's how faith comes. Right. Don't even know what to pray, how to pray. And I begin to set out to do that. And I'm still pursuing that to this day. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I, the further I go, the more I see I wouldn't even know who was talking to me if he said something else to me personally if I don't know this word. Right. Right. Because the enemy will try to trick you. Oh, yeah. And everything that's spiritual and real is not God. There are some things, they are very spiritual and they're very real and they're not God. Mm -hmm. Well, how are you going to know the difference between them? Put your nose in this book. Yeah. Because even though there are many different human authors, it's the same spirit author in Genesis as it is in Exodus, as it is in Psalms and Proverbs and Isaiah and Matthew and Revelation. And even though you're reading through the hand of different human instruments, you're hearing the same voice, the same voice, the same voice. And more familiar you get with that voice. Then if something else tries to lead you, you'll go, uh-uh, no, that's a stranger's voice. I don't know that. And if the Spirit of God wants to say something in addition to you personally in detail, it sounds just like this. 
Hallelujah. It's in line with all the scriptures and you're not easily fooled right. or deceived or misled. Mm -hmm. Amen. Find out what I've already said to you, he said. Mm -hmm. He said if God, you know, they wouldn't hear when he cried out to them, so he said, I'm not, I'm not going to hear. There are two prayers in, in, in particular God cannot answer. He just can't. For one thing, it's impossible for God to lie. So anything he ever said, he cannot contradict that. It's impossible. One prayer he can't answer is you praying, trying to get him to do something that he's already done. Hmm? <laughs> It's a prayer he can't answer. Trying to get him to do it. I've heard people say, you know, God, please heal me. Please heal me. Please heal me. And then I just don't know why he won't heal me. Well, you can say this. I've seen people go to the altar to get saved and cry and cry and beg and then tell somebody, you know, well, did, did, you, did you receive the Lord? Did you get saved? No, I don't think so. What do you mean? I just don't feel like it. I just don't feel like he heard my prayer. Begging God to save them. Well, he already has. All of their sins have already been put on Jesus. He already paid the price for those sins. Is that right? So what do they need to do? Talk God into saving them. No. He already decided that before they were born. What do they need to do? They need to receive. They need to receive. It's a matter of receiving. God can't, can't do what people ask him to do, what he's already done. And also God can't do, won't do what he told you to do. Good example of this. God, make the devil quit. <laughs> Please, God, make the devil leave me alone. Make him quit. Wasted prayer. Somebody said, huh? Wasted prayer. He told us to resist the devil. And he would flee from us. He gave us authority. <laughs> Is this okay or not? <laughs> Are there a lot of wasted prayer? A lot, oh man. We've all done it. I just described to you how I did it for months and months and months. God talked to me, talked to me, talked to me, and I'm not, I'm, I didn't know what his word said. I didn't know how to hear and listen. But we're making progress. Somebody say, I'm making progress. Making progress. Making progress. Hallelujah. <laughs> Go with me to Mark 11, verse 22. Anybody ever read Mark 11? You ever noticed verse 22, 23, and 24? If not, you're in for a treat. <laughs> and if so, I assure you there's more to see. He talks about prayer, Jesus does, in this verse. Mark eleven twenty two. 22, Jesus answering said to them, have faith in God. For verily I say to you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. This is not prayer. This is not prayer. And this is what we just got through talking about. He didn't say, if you got a mountain in your life, beg God to move the mountain. No. 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 
And again, can you see how this could be misdirected, vain praying? Because you're begging God to do something that he told you to do. Can he just sweep that aside and say, well, you know, I see you're really hurting and going through some stuff. Let's just forget what I said. No. What did he tell you to do? What's a mountain in, in this situation? It's something really big obstacle in your way. In between you and where you want to go. What do we do? What do you say do? You speak to it. You say to the mountain. This is not prayer. This is not praying to the Father. This is you talking to the problem. Is most of the church doing this? No. no. Tiny fraction of the church Amen. even believes this. Amen. You speak to it. That's right. right? You say, problem? Mm -hmm. Get out of here. That's right. And you don't just yell and scream at it. It's not a matter of volume and repetition. You've got to believe that what you are saying shall come to pass. Amen. Amen. So you can yell and talk, but if you don't believe it, that's not going to work either. <laughs> but you believe. You talk to it. Right? That's right. And you need to. You need to. I need to on a regular basis. You, when you realize something's bugging you, something's harassing you, something's hindering you, something's in your way, you need to speak right out loud. Right. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Frustration? Leave me. Depression? Get out of here in the name of Jesus. Infection? I'm talking to you. Get out of my body. Come on, are y'all listening or not? If it's over your child, fever, leave that baby. Go. Now, you know, we get mocked for these things. But who am I quoting? Who am I reading? Jesus. Oh, y'all are just that blab it, grab it, confess it, possess it bunch. Amen. Jesus said this. Amen. Are you disparaging his words? Are you mocking him? See, people have replaced the word of God with their religious tradition. They said, no, no. Now, great-grandma and, and grandma before her begged and pleaded with God, and, and, and they are expert beggars and pleaders. <laughs> and that's what we're going to do. We're going to beg God. And we're going to plead God. And if it don't move, then it must not have been His will. We just don't understand why. And there must be a reason. Yeah, there's a reason. <laughs> You didn't do what he told you to do. And we've all been there. Are y'all okay or not? Yes. This is not prayer. But verse 24 is prayer. How do we get an answer to our prayer? Therefore, I say to you, what things soever you desire, Brother Kenneth Hagin Sr., who's in heaven now, if you heard any of his testimony, he was uh, born premature and deformed heart, incurable blood disease, and they said nobody in his condition had lived past age 16 or so, and when he became 15 and 16, it happened to him just the way they said. He became eventually completely paralyzed and just at death's door, and best doctors that they could find said, no, he, he can't live. And he got a hold of this. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. He said as a Baptist boy reading uh, Grandma's Methodist Bible, I believe it was. They, all, they read the same, right? <laughs> Supposed to. He got a hold of this because he had pled and he had begged. Please, God, heal me. I'm just, I'm just a teenager. I've never really lived. I don't want to die now. Please, God. He'd, he'd pray, sometimes he said all night long, begging God, pleading God, just got worse and worse. Can God hear all prayers? No. 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 He can't receive all prayers. 
He can't answer all prayers. If you won't listen to him, he can't listen to you. He's not going to change what he said. It was perfect when he said it. It was right when he said it. It was the answer. It'll always be the answer. Whether we live or die won't change what he said. And if we want results, trying to get him to change from what he said is futile. And we'll perish while we're doing it. He said, the Lord quickened that to him. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. He said he saw it. He saw it. I've got to believe I receive my healing while I'm laying here paralyzed. I've got to believe I receive my healing now before I see anything. Come on, can you see this? And he goes through the testimony that he did that. And not long after that, the Lord told him, now you believe you're well. He said, I sure do. <laughs> He's laying there paralyzed. Now you believe, he said, I sure do. He said, well, well, people ought to be up this time of day. It was 10 in the morning. And by faith, he endeavored to get up, pushed his paralyzed legs off the side. He said, they fell and hit the floor like pieces of firewood. Grabbed a hold of the post of the bed and said he, he slid down until his knees touched the floor. Parent can't, can't walk, can't stand. And he, he began to declare that he believed that he received his healing. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wanted to declare to the Lord that he's healed. Mm -hmm. To the devil, he wants them to know he's healed. Right. And anybody, he said, and while he's doing that, Something hit him in the top of the head. Not hit him, but he began to sense it. He said it felt like warm honey. And it just oozed over his head and over his face. And it just kept, kept going over his body. And he said when it got to his legs, they began to feel like thousands of pins were sticking in them. He said it hurt so bad, but it felt so good. Because he had no feelings in them. They were paralyzed. And in just a few moments, he's standing there. Hallelujah. On his own power, with his hands up in the air, praising God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he didn't die at age 16 and ministered for all those decades and influenced folks like me and you. With thousands of Rhema grads all over the world and churches and ministries. So he didn't have to die. He didn't have to die. And we don't have to die early and wrong. Didn't the Bible say with long life, I'll satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Miracles do happen. Do they happen for everybody? No. All things are possible to him that believes. But they do happen. They do happen. Oh, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe what? Believe what? Believe that God is able. No? That's not what, that's good to believe, but that's not what he said. Believe it's God's will to heal. That's excellent, but that won't get it done. <laughs> hmm? Believe God wants me well. That's wonderful, but that won't get it done. Well, I just, I've heard people say this. Well, I just believe that God in his own good time, in his own good way, he's going to heal me. That's not what he said. And you're walking beside you. When, when are you going to believe you've received? When you feel it, when you see it, and there's no faith there. Y'all with me or not? What do you believe? Believe what? What, what? You receive what? Whatever you were praying about. Whatever you were desiring, you believe you receive that. And that word receive is also the same word in the, New, in the King James, translated take. Take. Believe that you take it. 
We did not physically take it, mm -hmm. but what? Believe that you take it. Believe that you take it. Somebody say, believe you take it. Believe. 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 Do you know how you, for, you get forgiven? Mm -hmm. You believe. believe you take forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. You don't have to continue in condemnation. No matter what things, no matter how terrible they may be. Mm -hmm. yes. The thing that needs to happen, God's ready to forgive. Yes. Didn't the scripture say so? Yes. He's ready. He, he, he's slow to be angry. He's great in mercy. He's ready to forgive, but you've got to receive your forgiveness. Yes, amen. You need to say, Lord, I repent. I'm sorry for that. Mm -hmm. And I believe I receive mm -hmm. cleansing yes. by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. I receive, in fact, somebody needs to say it right now. Say, I receive, I receive full, forgiveness full forgiveness and complete cleansing. And complete cleansing. I receive it. I, receive I it. take it by faith. And I have it now. Is it God's will for you to be forgiven yes, and cleansed? Yep. Why would he have sent Jesus mm -hmm. to right. do all that, right? right? Then you prayed according to his will. Yes, amen. Right? Yes. And if you pray according to his will, what do you know? He'll hear us. He hears you. Yes. Right, right. And if he hears you, what do you know? Right. You have it. Yes, you have it. Yes. You have the petition. That you desire to him. But it's not about how good you can beg. When you pray, do what? Believe, Believe that you take it. Look at Matthew 8 and get ready to shout. Okay. <laughs> Matthew 8, 17. Have you got a little time tonight? Yes, sir. I'm not quite done. Okay, keep going. <laughs> Matthew 8, verse 16. When the even was come, they brought to Jesus many that were possessed with devils. Today people would say that's all kind of uh, mental problems, yeah. solical problems, but spirits are involved oftentimes. Mm -hmm. Nothing to be afraid of, just something to deal with. Mm -hmm. Resist the devil and what will happen? Yeah. He'll flee from you. He cast out the spirits not through prayer. Mm -hmm. Come on, can you see this? Yes. Not through prayer, mm -hmm. but through the spoken word. Yes. And he did what? Healed all. How many? All. Now, this is a group of thousands. Yes. Now, surely in a group of thousands, mm -hmm. you could find at least one or two unlucky ones <laughs> that it wasn't God's will to heal. Uh -huh. hmm? right. Or it just wasn't his timing. No. 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 He healed, no. He healed all. Yes. Why? Because it's his will for all to be healed. Yeah. Verse 17, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took. That's took is the same word that's in Mark 11 24. Same word. Look it up, verify it if you want to. Not right now, but when you get home. He took our infirmities, that's our weaknesses, and he bore our sicknesses. Mm -hmm. How did Jesus take your sickness in 2018? He wasn't physically sick with it prior to this. He was never sick personally. Just like he did not sin personally. But when he went to the scourging post and when he went to the cross, he took it Amen. by faith. Mm. Mm. Oh. Mm. <laughs> told you to get ready to shout. He, he took it. Mm. He didn't deserve to be sick. He didn't deserve to be broken. He didn't deserve to be scourged or crucified. He didn't deserve to be judged. Uh -huh. yeah. no. No. But he took it. He took it. Thank you. And we don't deserve yeah. to be healed. Right. No. You don't? Right. We don't deserve to receive miraculous healing and strength. But we can have it yes. if we'll take it. 
How did he take it? By faith. How do we take it? By faith. He took our sickness by faith. We take his healing by faith. His taking our sickness gives us a right to take the healing. Oh, hallelujah. He took our weakness and our sickness by faith. He received them. He allowed all the sins of mankind, past, present, and future. He didn't just sympathize with our sin. The Bible said he became sin. Why would he do that? That's why he, he sweat blood in the garden and said, Father, if there's any way, let this cup pass from me. We have no idea what he went through. You can just only guess. Why would he do it? He took our sin so we could take his righteousness. Yes. Yes. <laughs> he took the chastisement of our peace so we could take his peace. Mm -hmm. He became poor mm -hmm. so we could be rich. Yes. He took our sicknesses and our pains mm -hmm. so we could take his healing yes. and his strength. Do you believe it, friends? Yes. Yes. This is redemption. Yes. This is yes. what happened on the cross and at the scourging post. Did he do it? Did he do it? Did he take it? Yes, he did. Well, if he really became it and took it, then I can really take his healing. I can really take and receive. It's not by feeling. It's by faith. I don't deserve it, but I don't have to. It's already bought. It's already paid for. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many believe everybody's being, the, the ability to be born again has already been bought and paid for? Yes. There are millions that don't believe it. They won't receive it, but they can't say, I, God won't save me. I don't know why. They're wrong. Mm -hmm. They're wrong. And all the blessings and benefits of the cross, of the redemption, belong to us. Amen. It's a matter of learning how to receive. Learning how to lay hold. Somebody say, I believe it. I Mark 5, go there please. Mark 5 is a great example of somebody doing this with Jesus personally. Mark 5, 25. I'm going to read this in Young's literal translation. Mark 5, 25. A certain woman had an issue or a hemorrhage of blood 12 years. And many things having suffered under many physicians and having spent all that she had and having profited nothing. So her case would be considered hopeless. She's tried everything that she knew to try. And not to knock doctors. We're thankful for doctors. But there's too, too quick that they can look at you and say, there's nothing we can do. And having spent all that she had and having profited nothing, but rather having come to the worse. She's worse off than before she did all the treatments and all the things and spent all the money. But even when man can do nothing for you, when science can do nothing for you, there's still Jesus. I said, there's still Jesus. She heard about Jesus. That's why this story's in the book. She heard about Jesus. What did she hear? She heard what Acts talks about, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, and he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. The Bible says everybody Jesus healed was satanically oppressed. It calls sickness satanic oppression. So don't dare call it a blessing in disguise. Ain't nothing good about being sick. Nothing. Having heard about Jesus, he came in the press behind the multitude behind and she touched his garment. 
For she said, is she begging God to heal her? No, no she's not. No. She's in huh? No. Is she feeling sorry for herself? No. She should have never left home in her weakened condition. Mm -hmm. She pressed and she pushed through the crowd mm -hmm. and she's saying, if I just touch, when I touch, I'll be saved. The, the word used to describe healing is the same word as saved from other things because it's part of the same work of redemption. Yes. When you say I'm saved, you said a mouthful. Right. Mm -hmm. Saved from what? Not just saved from hell. Right. Saved from all the works of the curse right. yeah. of the law. Mm -hmm. Saved from all manner of evil and things. She said, what she's saying, when I touch, I'm going to be saved from this hemorrhage. Right. I'm going to be saved from this condition. I'm going, I'm going to be saved. Mm -hmm. She was saying it. Mm -hmm. Faith comes by hearing. Mm -hmm. What's she doing? Verse 28, 29, immediately <laughs> was the fountain of her blood dried up and she knew in her body she had been healed of that plague. Why? What happened? What happened? What happened? When she touched, she took. Somebody say, when she touched, she took. Say it again. When she touched, she took. she took. Say it again. When she touched, she, touched. she, took. she took. How'd she take it? She did touch his clothes with her physical hand, but that wasn't her healing. How'd she take it? She believed. She took it. She believed. She received it. She believed. She, lay hold. she did lay hold of it, but not with her hands. But faith has hands. Yes. Mm -hmm. Faith Amen. has hands, mm -hmm. spirit hands, mm -hmm. that can lay hold of spirit things. Yes. That's what happened when you got born again. Yes. That's what happens when you receive forgiveness and cleansing. Yes. That's what happens when you receive peace, joy. All these are things you can't see, mm -hmm. you can't touch. You can't receive it with a physical hand, but you can receive it with a hand of faith. Say it again. When she touched, when she, touched, she, touched. She, took. she took. Keep reading. Verse 30. Immediately, Jesus, having known in himself that out of him power had gone forth, he turned about in the multitude. He said, who did touch my clothes, my garments? Who touched it? The disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and says, who, who did touch me? Now let's just stop right here. Jesus is not having a healing meeting. Right. He's not having a healing line. Amen. Mm. They're going down the road. This woman didn't even ask if it would be okay. <laughs> did she? <laughs> she obviously is not wavering about it being the will of God mm -hmm. or not. Thankfully, no theologian had gotten to her <laughs> to tell her that sometimes it's not the will of God. Uh -huh. And she might be one of the unluck. Thank the Lord. Yes. Nobody had told her that. She just came and took yes. a healing yes. and, 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 and faded back into the crowd and felt in her body that she's healed and is smiling like the cat that got the canary. It's not going to tell anybody, but it didn't work. Jesus stopped. These things are real. I said, these things are real. The anointing of God, healing power is real. She was aware of it coming into her. He was aware of it going out of him. Is that right? That's why he stopped in his tracks and said, who touched me? And, and his disciples going. And finally they said, Lord, I ain't no telling how many bit because it was a throng. And that's what she had to push through to get to him. 
They said, Lord, people have touched you all over. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. Somebody. Well, yeah, a lot of somebodies yeah. touched you. Verse 32. He's looking around to see her. So this could be a word of knowledge that he knows it's a her. Right. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. wow. That had done this. And yet he's functioning. Somebody said, well, he's God. He knew everything. He is God, but he didn't function as a man. And uh, in other accounts, it said he told them, no, somebody touched me. He's talking about a touch of a different kind. He's talking about the touch of faith, the touch that takes. Uh -huh. Come on, say it again. When she touched. When she touched. Excuse me. She took. She took. She took. Yeah, I said it right. When she touched. When she touched. She took. She took. That's what Jesus said to do. Yes. Whatever it is you're desiring, when you pray, do what? Take. Believe you that you take it. Believe you receive it, that you take it, and then you'll have it. Yes. You'll see it. You'll feel it after you believe you take it. Mm -hmm. And so he wouldn't quit. He just stood there. Mm -hmm. It got uncomfortable. <laughs> if, you read, if you read Luke's account and others' account, it said he looked around the crowd and it said everybody denied. Mm. He's looking around. People are going, uh-uh, no. That wasn't me. No, it wasn't me. And I don't know if he saw her and she went, mm. I don't know. It, this, this, this happened over a number of minutes. The Bible said they all denied. And finally, she saw she couldn't be hid. He's not going to leave. So she came and fell down. She may be concerned he wants it back. I don't know. Because she, she didn't even ask. Oh, friends, Religion has come up with all this stuff about it may not be God's will or his timing or all this other, but that's not how it works. No. You receive by faith. Mm -hmm. She came afraid and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him, told him all the truth. Mm. He said to her, Lady, you should have asked. <laughs> Because it's not always the Father's will. Uh, no. Sometimes, you know, God puts things on people no. and He's working something out in their life. No. No. He's rejoicing with her. He says, Daughter, didn't say God in His sovereignty decided to heal you today. Didn't say my anointing healed you, even though the anointing was at work. Come on, can you? Because if it was just the anointing, everybody that touched. Would have got something. He said, your faith saved you. Go away in peace and behold from your place. How many believe the Lord is pleased with this? He's happy about this. In a sea of curious and accidental touches, here's a real faith touch. Somebody has been listening to the message. Somebody has got a hold of this. Somebody he don't know who it may be in the beginning, but he goes, whoa, huh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Where are you? <laughs> Nothing like the touch of faith. Millions are pleading and crying, oh, please, God, touch me. Please, God, touch me. Please, God, touch me. He's saying, please, somebody touch me. Touch me with faith. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Singers and players, would you come? I want to minister to those that would like to receive healing tonight. Is that okay with you? I want to, uh, the scripture said, believers would lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I got hands. I believe. And uh, if you are confident that when hands are laid on you, that you believe you'd receive healing tonight, then I want you to stand up right now, wherever you are. Now, you don't, don't feel like you have to stand up on this. If you feel like you're doing good and you're fine, that's, that's great. No need to. But if you just, something's quickened in you while you heard the preaching and teaching tonight, and you just believe 
that when hands laid are, are laid on you, you can already be saying like that woman, uh, when I touch, when he touches, when we touch, we take. You're going to believe that you receive healing. Go ahead and step out from where you are. Come on up to the front. Ushers.